access to blood is the difference between life and death. But across the globe, when a doctor reaches for a blood bag, it often isn't there. So when a patient comes in after trauma with an internal bleeding, what can that doctor do? Well, there is one option, and often the only option, is actually to salvage and recycle that person's own blood through a process called autotransfusion. And this process, Johns Hopkins University has actually been showing is better than using donor blood because your own blood is better. And as donor blood sits on the shelf, it loses its ability to transport oxygen and nutrients. And also there's a risk of disease transfer, there's a risk of rejection. And you know what, we actually do this process in the United States. But the technology we use to do so looks like this. It's unsuitable in emerging markets due to high cost, training, and power requirements. So this technology is not reaching a lot of the world. But I am in awe of doctors around the globe who are using the tools that they have, not medical devices, but simple techniques to do this process. They're literally sometimes using a cup or a soup ladle to scoop blood out from internal bleeding, filter it through gauze, and retransfuse it back to that same person. The question that's been in my mind when I first saw this was why? Why is this? And you might think that this procedure is done in sub-Saharan Africa, so one reason is that you know, maybe there's no money there. But when you dive in a little bit further, you recognize that, you know what? Each bag of donor blood, just the cost of the disease testing and the infrastructure, costs $100 per blood bag. And in the US, that's $250. So that's not it. And if you take even a step back and look at the overall system of medical devices and design, well, Actually, right now, 80% of the world's medical devices are designed for 10% of the world's population. What does that mean? That means that medical devices are being designed for the Western world, but not for the rest of the world. So I started working on this a little over six years ago. I founded a nonprofit working with rural mobile clinics in India. And I started thinking about this challenge and working with these doctors to design medical devices through this nonprofit. And I saw there were really three ways that medical devices were reaching emerging markets. And the first that you might have heard about before is donating medical equipment. But you know what? A lot of this equipment ended up in what's called over there medical device graveyards because it doesn't function. For something as simple as there's a diagnostic equipment where there's a roll of paper you print the results on, if that paper isn't there to print the results, the equipment doesn't work. So you need the supply chain. So then, well, large medical device companies are also trying to enter into emerging markets. They recognize the opportunity there because, well, medical devices in emerging markets are a $64 billion industry, and it's growing at over five times the rate of Western markets like the United States. But what they're doing is they're taking Western equipment, pairing off features, making it cheaper, and they think that's going to sell. And it's not working. There are these huge gaps in technology because the requirements and the needs and the way money is spent is just different. And so nonprofits as well are targeting this, so even my own prior company. But as I found out firsthand, building and getting the capital to create an R&D regulated intensive product is really hard as a nonprofit, and if you can get through that barrier, there's also no focus on really commercializing and scaling those technologies in a way that incentivizes the entire supply chain. So that's what I've been working on, and two and a half years ago created a company to address this very issue of not only design, but commercialization. And we decided to start with a very simple challenge and just one challenge to start, one device to prove this system that we will then pull other products in. And that's a product we call Hemafuse. So I mentioned that access to blood and how that can be solved by a very simple technology, and that's what we've created. So this is the device that combines the safety standards that we see in the United States for autotransfusion 
with the innovation and simplicity of what's being done in emerging markets and how it functions is simply you pull the handle up, blood is pulled in through a filter from internal bleeding, and you press the handle down and it's transferred directly to a blood bag to be retransfused. And this technology, it's not a small problem. Across Sub-Saharan Africa, there are 20 million cases each year that are viable for this process. And at CSGO, we recognize that opportunity, and we also see the commercial application, where we can create value for ourselves as a for-profit entity, create value for the distributor who will scale the product and for the hospital because they are a business as well, doing business of saving people's lives. And at the very end, keeping the patient in mind and having our device equal the cost of one unit of donor blood and save them on average $100 out of pocket because our device can salvage as many pints as our pooling internally. And we're doing this right now. We have proven the technical viability of our product. We've done testing with blood. We've done usability studies across Africa. And the device is actually in use for the very first time in Ethiopia right now. And really, we're very close to commercializing the product. Thank you. So we see something much more than this, something much more than this device, and actually a pipeline to take medical devices out into emerging markets that are designed with and for these doctors in emerging markets. And what I want to leave you with is I'm often asked why. Why me? Why this? Why now? And for me, I go back to that first device I took over to India with my nonprofit and was told by doctors who had never had a device designed with them or for them that this product could save lives. But Really, I think the more important question of is not just why, not just why look at medical devices and emerging markets and how fast they're growing and the opportunity there and the opportunity to save lives, but really ask, why not? Why not change the discussion? Why not get these technologies out into the hands of those doctors so they can save lives with proper tools to do so? And I challenge all of you to think the same way. So if you hear in a sentence both medical devices and sub-Saharan Africa, ask why not. Thank you.